Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us Let rejoice, us rejoice and, and be glad in it. it. Welcome to our recorded service here at Swamp Lutheran Church. Uh, welcome. A couple of quick announcements. Uh, our sound system is in. It's working well. We tested it on Sunday. Um, and of course, we now have a bill. And we encourage you to participate in defraying those expenses. Information is in your bulletin. We have pledge cards here. Uh, so as your heart uh, feels called to support that ministry, please give as you can. Widowers and Widows Luncheon is on July 24th. It's a Monday at 11.30 a.m. It's at Utter Choice. We ask that you RSVP to the office. If you need a ride, let us know about that, and we will arrange to have somebody come and get you and bring you to that luncheon. We don't want to exclude anyone. Vacation Bible School, as I'm recording this, we're halfway through the week over at the Shenick, uh, Shenick, yeah, at the Reinholds Carnival Grounds. Uh, going really well, uh, aside from rain on Sunday evening. It's been nice, and uh, kids are having a blast. So, a little update on that. Syrian Refugee Family, our council has authorized us to, to pursue uh, supporting a Syrian Refugee Family. If you are interested in serving on the committee, learning more, uh, let me know and as more information comes on a particular family uh, we'll get engaged and see if that's something for us here at Swamp to support. Reminder that our church picnic is on August the 27th immediately following our uh, worship service that morning. We have a single service of course and uh, our kitchen crew will be serving a brunch followed by some games. Uh, we've got Doug Culp's band, The Bell Bottoms, coming to provide the music. And we have a dunk tank for your pastor to sit in, and if you bring your cash, you can uh, purchase some balls to dunk your pastor into that ice-cold water, I'm sure it will be, on August 27th. So I encourage everyone to come out for that wonderful time of fellowship. God's Work, Our Hands Sunday is Sunday, September the 10th. Lunch will be provided for all those who volunteer, we're looking for service project. There's information in your bulletin. Uh, if you have some ideas, give us a call. Let us know so that we can uh, do God's work with our hands. Also need your t-shirt size. So if you're going to participate, let us know. We need that information by August the 18th. Hospitalizations and health concerns. Bobby Bachman had a stroke last week. In and out of the effort of hospital, he is at home. His only complaint right now is he's suffering from some tunnel vision. You can see great, straight ahead, peripheral vision, not so good. So keep him in his prayer, in our prayers, as he recovers from his stroke. Lucille Laura on Wednesday, um, hernia surgery. So as we record, she is now, I hope, in recovery from that surgery. So we want to keep Lucille in our prayers as she recovers. Also, I want you to keep Eric Hamaker in your prayers. Eric is a visitor here. Um, he is the brother-in-law of my internship supervisor who passed away during my internship. Eric had a uh, heart attack uh, just yesterday, in fact, and is recovering. So please keep Eric uh, in your prayers. He had a stent put in. He's doing well. He expects to come home today, being Wednesday as I record this. So keep Eric in your prayers. Birthdays this week, Sunday, Kim Wechter and Nancy Leffler. Monday, Greta Higgins. Tuesday, Andrew Hagee. And Saturday, Jeff Lead. And now we begin our worship singing hymn number 681, We Plow the Fields and Scatter, verses 1 and 3.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from the 55th chapter of the book of Isaiah. God's word to Israel's exiles is as sure and effective as never-failing precipitation. Their return to the Holy Land in a new exodus is cheered on by singing mountains and by trees that clap their hands. The lesson reads, For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the 8th chapter of the book of Romans. There is no condemnation for those who live in Christ. God sent Christ to accomplish what the law was unable to do, condemn sin, and free us from its death-dealing ways. The Spirit now empowers proper actions and values our lives and gives us the promise of resurrected life. St. Paul writes, There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his only son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to send the mind, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the sin of Christ does not belong to him, does not have the Spirit of Christ, does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, be God. to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, to you O Lord. Lord. In Matthew's Gospel, both Jesus and his disciples sow the seed of God's word by proclaiming the good news that the kingdom of heaven is near. Now in a memorable parable, Jesus explains why this good news produces different results in those who hear. The gospel speaks. That same, Jesus, that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path. And the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears. Listen, 
Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, you call us into a life of loving you. Equip and empower us to do just that. Amen. Amen. Growing up, my family had a sizable garden. And I must say, in all of the planting that we did in our garden, never once did we cast seed far and wide. You see, we were strategic. We placed seeds in rows, spaced them out to allow for the best growth. I mean, we didn't waste any. Of course, we weren't growing wheat, which I guess might be sown in broadcast style, as Jesus describes of the sower in his parable today. Even so, I've never witnessed a wheat farmer trying to seed his driveway or rock piles or untilled thorn-infested soil. I mean, that's an exercise in futility. But that's exactly what the main character in Jesus' parable of the sower does. Now this term parable, well it comes from the Greek word that means to throw alongside. That is one thing is used to describe another. And what Jesus does here is he throws a story about a sower alongside his ministry to describe the mixed reaction that it has received and will receive. And as he decodes the parable for his disciples, he says that some who hear the good news of God's coming reign will not understand it, and the devil will snatch it from their hearts. These folks are like the beaten path where the birds eat this fallen seed. Others who hear the good news immediately receive it, and it springs forth with joy. But when trouble and persecution is experienced, where well, they lose faith, then they stop following the way. They are like the rocky soil where roots are shallow and the plants wither in the heat of the sun. Still others who hear the word, well, they fail to receive it because they're too distracted by worldly things that they chase, like prestige and wealth. They're like thorn-infested soil. The word is choked out, and it dies. But some who hear the word are ready to receive it, and they understand it. They're like the ones who grow in faith. They follow the way. They share the good news. They bear the fruits of the Spirit producing exponential yields that would blow the mind of any farmer, a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. It's an amazing story to help the disciples understand the nature of Jesus' ministry and their role in it. And it was not what they expected. You see, what they expected, like many Jews of that time, was that when God finally acted to bring the kingdom into being, it would happen suddenly and gloriously in a Messiah-led movement that would sweep through Israel, topple Roman rule, and bring freedom, justice, and peace with it. And it would continue until the whole world had come under God's righteous rule. However, what they've seen, and then what Jesus describes, is a slow-moving, confusing movement that's characterized by the puzzling words of a nomadic preacher through the mixed responses of its hearers. There's nothing particularly powerful, decisive, or sudden here, but such is God's way, to plot along slowly, yet unstoppably. Now, if you're like me, every time I read this parable, well, your mind would gravitate to the four types of soil. And for me, uniquely as a pastor, I tend to wonder whether those who hear my preaching fall among all these various types of soil. I mean, who's hardened, rocky, thorny, 
or fertile. And I wonder how I can help loosen, till, fertilize, or otherwise prepare these various soils to make each the site for an impressive harvest. Of course, this story also makes me take a good hard look in the mirror. And I wonder if I am good soil, or perhaps one of the others. I suppose if we're honest with ourselves, we can find evidence of all four types of soil in our lives and our congregation, as well as ways to work this soil to improve it. Let's face it, we can all benefit from more prayer and less Twitter, more Bible study and less cynicism, more church, less television, more service, and less stuff. But then, I noticed that nowhere in this story does Jesus use the parable to condemn or encourage his listeners to be this good soil of which he speaks. After all, Jesus calls it the parable of the sower, not the parable of the four soils. And so, folks, it's not about the soil. It's about the nature and character of God, about God's kingdom, God's provision, God's extravagant generosity that is showered upon us like seed cast indiscriminately and profusely. So picture, if you will, Jesus the sower. He's throwing tons of seed across fields, meadows, and swamps, onto highways, back alleys, and mountaintops, into playgrounds, sidewalks, parking lots, literally everywhere. And his supply of seed, it's endless, as he throws fistfuls after fistfuls of seed all over the place with wasteful and reckless abandon. He cares little about where the seed falls. His focus is on sowing, flinging, casting that seed everywhere, continuously. Folks, Jesus is teaching that our God is a sower who would rather lose three quarters of a seed to poor soil rather than withhold even a single seed that just might take root and grow. I mean, we should never forget that all terrain, all people are God's own under God's provision and sustained by God's love. After all, who are we to determine who is the good soil worthy of God's generosity? Who are we to look at God's extravagant blessing and call it wasteful? And who are we to hoard what we have so freely and lavishly been given? Folks, our God is a patient God with a limitless supply of the seed of good news and blessing to sow across every corner of God's world, waiting it for it to bear fruit and produce mind-blowing yields of a hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. Such is the kingdom of heaven birthed by Jesus. It takes lots of work, lots of seed, lots of patience. And so I pray that we here at Swamp might trust in God's endless ability to soften the ground, clear away the rocks, and remove stubborn thorns to make way for an abundant harvest. Might we grow the kingdom by giving out in joy, scattering this seed before and going after us in the widest arcs our arms can make, sowing love and grace and goodness into the hard, rocky, thorny places in our community. And might those endless seeds of love, mercy, justice, humility, respect, and truthfulness fall through our fingers in such appalling quantities, the world might laugh at our lavish and absurd generosity. Because that, my friends, is the good news in Christ Jesus for us today and every day. And now may the peace that surpasses our human understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Guide your church, O God, to sow seeds of forgiveness and righteousness on good soil. 
Direct your people to proclaim your love in this congregation and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Sustain your creation, O God, by sending favorable weather, causing trees and fields to grow, protecting waterways from pollution, and instilling in all people the need to be good stewards. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Maintain peace among all people, O God, and raise up lawyers to work for justice in the courts, advocates to speak for the downtrodden, and politicians to work on behalf of the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Heal those who are sick, O God. We pray for those on our prayer list and all those we name before you now, either aloud or silently. Guide healthcare workers to care for those who suffer, scientists to conduct life-saving research, and counselors to care for victims of abuse and exploitation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. Answer the prayers of those gathered in worship, O God. Protect those who travel near and far. Accompany visitors to this congregation and nurture our faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Inspire us by the faithful departed, O God. Examples of your embodied love, whose confidence in the resurrection guides us in living lives worthy of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O God, commend, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer. That Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now receive God's blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed. Bless, keep, and sustain you now until the end of the age. Amen. And now we conclude our worship by singing hymn number 550 on what has now been sown, verses 1 and 3. Thanks be to God.